Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 10 of my C Sharp video tutorial. This one's going to be very interesting because this time we're going to be using interfaces first to model a simple car. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to model a complex, flexible system that is going to show you how you can interact with electronic devices. We are quite literally going to create objects that are going to model picking up a remote control taking the remote control, aiming it at a television, pressing a button, and then having interactions occur between in an extremely flexible way. And basically an interface is just a class with nothing but abstract methods, like we saw previously with abstract classes. And interfaces are used to represent a contract an object may decide to support. Now, all of the code as well as a transcript of this video is available in the description. And now, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to model a very simple interface here and then create an object that is going to implement it. And we're going to start off with what I'm going to call drivable. Now, very often interfaces commonly have names that are adjectives because adjectives modify nouns or objects. However, the names very often also describe abstract things. And it is very common to prefix your interfaces in C Sharp with a capital letter I like you see right here. Now what I'm going to do is model what I consider a drivable vehicle to be able to do. So an interface can have properties. And remember, this is a contract. So we're saying that anyone that models this interface has to have wheels. And we're going to go get and set. And they are also going to have a speed and we're also going to say that they are going to have to have the methods or capabilities to both move as well as stop and all of these are considered abstract methods just you don't have to put the abstract in there because you already labeled it as an interface so we're going to save that and like i said this is a simple one now we're going to jump over into vehicle and it's going to have a line here and it's going to say that, you know, we didn't implement the interface. And this is how you implement an interface, just a colon and whatever you want the interface to be. And you can have multiple interfaces, you, so just put a comma and multiple interfaces after. But we're going to implement this, so we're going to say show potential fixes and implement interface. And it's going to create everything here for me. Now I am going to dramatically simplify this. So we are going to have our speed here and I am just going to get rid of all of this stuff. So that's all gonna go away. And then I'm just gonna go get and set, just like we always do. I'm going to also get rid of all this extra stuff right here. And then inside of this, likewise, just go get and set. All right, so those are all set up. Well, now what we need to do is actually decide what we're going to do with the move and the stop uh, vehicle here in this situation. But I'm also going to want to put a constructor inside of here. So let's go public vehicle. And let's also throw in another field that's going to be specific to the vehicle class. Let's say that we want to have one in here that is going to be represent the brand. So this is going to be a string and brand and have the getters and setters generated for us. So we're going to have brand as well as speed and wheels. Now we can go into the constructor area here and string and we'll say brand is equal to no brand by default. We are then going to come in and get the number of wheels and we're going to say zero by default. And then we will get our speed and have that also be zero by default. And then of course you know that we're going to say brand is equal to whatever the brand was that was passed in and wheels is equal to whatever the wheels were that were passed in and then speed equal to the speed that was passed in. All right, so there's our constructor, pretty simple stuff. Now for the move part, I just want to keep this nice and simple. The next part's going to be a little bit more complicated. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do just put some information here. Do something like the brand moves forward at and whatever the speed is set at. And then I'm going to say miles per hour. And then likewise, we can come down here and get rid of this guy. Paste this inside of here. And then we're just going to say the brand. And we'll just change this to stops right like that. All right, so very simple. And uh, let's go in here also since it is stopped and let's change this to zero. 
Now we can jump over into program and we can go and implement this. Now I guess I should also show you how to create interfaces. You're going to do it slightly different than classes. You're going to go in here and click on project, add new item, and one of the items uh, options is going to be interface. So that's how you create an interface inside of C Sharp or Visual Studio, I guess, specifically. All right, so now let's go and create it. So we want to create a vehicle object. So I'm going to go vehicle, and I'm going to say this is a Buick is equal to new vehicle, and we're going to pass in some information. So we'll say Buick, and then we'll say it has four wheels, and it's going 160 miles per hour. Okay, so just something to do. And then we can check if a vehicle is going to implement drivable. How you do that is go if Buick is I drivable. Then we know that we will be able to use the methods inside of it. So we can do something like move and we can also come in and do stop. Like I said, this is a very, very simple type of interface. Otherwise, we can come in here and let's just get rid of all that right there. And we'll say something like the can't be driven because it's not a, it doesn't implement drivable. So that makes sense. So Buick brand will go in there and save that. All right, so now that we have that all set up and saved, we can run this and you're going to see that it's able to go in there and the Buick moves forward at 160 miles per hour and the Buick stops. Okay, like I said, extremely simple type of setup. Now we're going to do something that is quite elaborate. What I'm going to do here is basically with interfaces, you can create very flexible systems. And here what I'm going to do is model a generic electronic device like a television or a radio and remotes that are then going to control them and then further yet the buttons on the remote. So we're able to take this from a big picture type of thing deep, deep, deep down. So what I'm going to do here is this is an interface, of course, called electronic device. And I'm going to say that every single one of my electronic devices are going to be able to turn on and turn off. And let's say we want the volume to be able to turn up on them and the volume to be able to turn down. And for homework, I'm going to basically set up the on and off and your job is to go and make the volume up and down work. And if you do that, you'll understand interfaces on a very deep level. And that's all we're doing right there. We just created our interface for all of our electronic devices. All right. So now we're going to get more specific with television. Now, because we implemented electronic device, the electronic device interface, any other device we create will know exactly how to interface with those devices. So since we have a television, we know that we are going to have all of those different methods. Come in here, show potential fixes, just click on it, implement interface. All right, so it just created everything. Now I have to come in here and specifically tell it what to do. So one thing I want to do though, is I want to come in and I want to define volume. So I'm going to go int and volume and there that is and then for these guys get this out of here if it goes off it's just quite simply just get rid of that and we'll say the tv is off and of course it could do much more complex things than just that and then for on we're going to do pretty much exactly the same thing the tv is on and for volume down we can come in and do something a little bit more complex. So we could say something like if and volume is not equal to zero, then we want to decrement the volume. And then after that, we can come in and say, let's go like this and get rid of this. The TV volume is at and throw volume into that like this. And likewise, we will do a very, very similar thing with the volume up. Paste that in there. If the volume is not equal to, let's say we want the upper bounds to be 100, then we can increment this and the TV volume is at volume. All right, so we'll just keep that that way and we'll copy this for later. All right, so very simply, incrementally, we are adding this functionality here, all right? Now what we're going to do is jump over and handle commands, which are going to basically represent but button presses. Going to be doing this in an interface called command. 
And basically we can model what happens when a button is pressed, for example, a power button. And what we're gonna do here is break everything down so that we can add pretty much an infinite amount of flexibility to say a remote control that would have numerous buttons on it. And basically what we're going to do inside of here is just say that this is going to have two capabilities. It's going to have an execute and it's going to have an undo. So just like a power button, if you press it the first time and the TV's off, it turns it on. If you press it again, if the TV's on, it turns it off, okay? So it's basically going to do something or undo what it previously did. And that's all we're gonna do with that. Now we're gonna jump over into power button and we're going to implement this. So there's the command, we'll come in, show potential fixes, implement interface, and there that is. And basically what we're going to do inside of here is we are going to refer to our instances using the interface. So we can come in and we can go electronic device and let's call this device just to keep it simple. And then let's uh, also implement this a little bit further. So go public and power button. This is going to receive an electronic device, which I'm gonna call device. And then I can say this device is equal to whatever the device is that they passed inside of there. So that's how we can set that up. And now simply we can come into the execute part and say device and on, and it's working. And undo, we can come in here to this guy. And whenever that's clicked on, we can call off. And it's very modularized and very, very simple to see what's going on. Basically, if we come in here, we can see a device on. We jump over here into the electronic device interface. We see it was defined there. And then in television specifically, it is defined there what happens whenever on is clicked on. So everything is very modularized and extremely flexible. It's so, so easy to come in here and make dr dramatic changes without affecting any of the other classes that are defined inside of it. So now let's get even more into it with TV remote. So with our TV remote, what we're going to do is literally model the action of picking up the remote with your hand off of a desk or what have you. So all this is going to do is have public and static, and it's going to return any type of electronic device. Remember I said this could be a radio, this could be anything. So we'll say get device, and in this situation, what it's going to do is return a new television. And we could put logic inside of here that would return a radio or whatever. But I'm just keeping this very simple. And you could add that logic and it would be very simple also. So we have that saved. Let's jump back over into our program and let's make it work. So what we're going to do here is we're going to model the act of picking up a remote and aiming it at the TV and clicking the power button and then watching as the TV turns on and off. So the very first thing we need to do is pick up the TV remote. And to do so, I'm going to come in and go electronic device. And I'm going to call this TV. It could be called TV remote or whatever, but I already called this TV remote. So, all right, so we got that. And we're then going to call get device. So there's get device, got that all set up. And now we can create our power button. So we can say power button, and let's just call this power button is equal to new power button. And we're going to say that we want the TV power button specifically to be used. And just like that, now we can go pow butt and execute or press or whatever you want it to be, but I just called it execute. And now we can also come in here and go power butt and undo right like this. And everything is going to work. So it just looks right. I mean, you know, it's pressing the button, pressing it again. And if we run it, you're going to see that all those things matched up with each other across all those different classes. And by pressing the button on the remote control, it turned the TV on and off. Okay, so there is both a very simple type of way of using interfaces and abstract methods and a whole bunch of different things. And then a more elaborate system. And as we start making games, you're going to see that games are very much modeled in this way of building up from the very, very abstract to the very, very specific. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial, and like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.